everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! Woo! Wow, we've got um these crazy things right here, and you're probably wondering what's inside of the Cheeto dust, Stephanie. What's inside? Things that you probably shouldn't consume in one sitting. I think it's like 50 slices of cheese and 50 slices of just the most square ham that I could find, like <laughs> deli ham, and then bread, and then crusted with egg and Cheetos, and then deep fried. So um, that's what we have. And also the nacho fries from Taco Bell are back. So we got a whole Taco Bell spread of the, uh, the nacho taco, the Doritos nacho tacos, the chalupas that don't even look that chalupa -y. Why do they look so pale? They don't look golden. Then we got the nacho fries, the cheesy Fiesta potatoes, these um, delightful Cinnabon bites, a Supreme wrap, and then all of these other things. But what is going on right now? That's not even what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is what the fork is going on with my whole feed. Everywhere I look are just people giving me FOMO, and I know they're doing it on purpose, okay? Because I have been feeling extreme FOMO. All I see online are people posting Taylor Swift concerts, Beyonce concerts, Blackpink concerts, and I'm so freaking jealous. I wish I was at any single one of them. I would freaking die. So I've already started searching for the best deals on tickets for upcoming shows, which is why today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app with over 28 million downloads. And anytime I search for any big show or concert, I'm checking SeatGeek. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more. So whatever you're looking for, they probably have it. Did you know Beyonce is gonna be at the MetLife Stadium in New York City, July 29th? So I'm just saying, I'm just- We've been to Beyonce concert. <laughs> exactly! Twice is also gonna be at the MetLife Stadium in July, and Blackpink is gonna be in New York City in August. Again, I'm just saying, huh. I'm just saying that would be an amazing early birthday gift is all I'm Are saying. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm just saying, you can click SeatGeek linked in the description, <laughs> okay? I'm sorry, but I'm dying. I am so excited at even the possibility that I'm going. I am eyeing those tickets right now. And what I really like about SeatGeek is that I'm not too familiar with concert arenas. And I'm sure that every arena is a little bit different. I saw someone post. They were like, I paid dollars for this ticket and they probably didn't get it on SeatGeek because it was the worst ticket I've ever seen in my life. It was blocked by this giant like brick. And I was like, what? Why is there a pole directly in front of your seat? They were shocked. They did not know. SeatGeek rates each ticket on a scale of one through 10. And the green dots mean it's good. The red dots mean not so good. And every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. So SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. They put all the tickets across the internet in one place Place to make sure that you're getting a good deal so you can spend more time practicing your fan chants. I'm dead serious. I'm trying to go to Blackpink, okay? Are any of you guys going to Blackpink in August? Because let me know. And you know that I came through for you guys. Use my code BISS, B-I-S-S, for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code BISS, B-I-S-S. So make sure to click the link in the description to download the app, and that's code BISS for $20 off. And thank you, SeatGeek, for sponsoring today's video, and let's get into the food. Okay, we're gonna have to get into the tacos first because I have every, like every bun in my body wants to melt these cheese blocks. So I wanna cut it open and I want the cheese, I want okay. it to drench the whole area. So I'm gonna start with a chalupa even though it doesn't okay. look very chalupa So what came today. back though? Like which one's new? The nacho fries. <laughs> oh, this fry was new? Yeah. Well, it came back. So they were in, and then they were out, and now they're back in. Mm -hmm. What's the point of that? Hmm. My thing is to build hype, you know? Mm. Like so what like... you're doing with your YouTube channel. How you were in, and then you're out, and everyone's just waiting for you to get back in. <laughs> Ten years from now. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna come back, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna have a comeback, guys. Make sure you support the comeback. <laughs> mm. Wow. I'm prepping for the comeback. Actually. Oh, right now. Mm -hmm. These are so good. I kind of feel like the chalupa is not hitting today. Chalupa is not hitting today. So I'm gonna go for mm. this one. Mm. Mm. I feel like that's not what I ordered, but that's okay. Let's try this nacho one. Let's see if this one is any good. 
Mm. That one's good, right? Mm-hmm. The chalupa, the filling is really good. I feel like it should have been more fried on the outside, right? Mm. That's the only thing that's not hitting right now. But it's still good. It just could be fried better. Wow, that taco is so good. I'm dipping my nacho fries into the nacho cheese. Mm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Taco glass is just some kind of dip. Mm. Like, mm. But what is it? Berea. Like the, yes, oh, oh my goodness. Chocolate. I don't know what I'm looking for. Nothing's hitting today? It's not as dank. Everything feels almost healthy. I'm just very confused. <laughs> not healthy, but like, it doesn't have that dank Taco Bell vibe right now. What? So delicious to me. It's delicious, but it could be crazier. Like the chalupa's not fried. It could be a little saltier. Maybe it's a cheese block you're looking for. Mm. Mm. I'm a little nervous about those, I'm gonna be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> they feel like nuclear bombs just okay. waiting to go off right now. Your genius idea. <laughs> Actually, not your Not idea. my genius idea on TikTok, okay? <laughs> not my genius idea. Please be gentle with my baby. It took a surprising amount of time to make this. Like an alarming amount of time, actually, if I'm being honest with you. Okay, I've got my little iPad here because we're doing confessions today. And I'm really excited. I feel like I haven't done confessions in a minute. And I wish Dan Dan was here. Our schedules have not been adding up and it's been very frustrating, but that's fine because we're going on a trip later this month, so it's okay. Okay, I'm gonna give this chalupa another bite, another try. It exploded. Hurry, hurry, put it, put the leaky girl on here. Oh my god, it looks kind of good though. Kinda, I can't wait to dip everything in there. It looks kind of saucy. Oh though. my god, oh my god, I can't wait to dip everything Look. in there. Get up, get up, get up. Okay, will you cut it? Um. Um. You know, they do this on TikTok all the time. And it. But looks... I always question the. The validity. Oh no, it's like a really weird meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I mean, that's what it looks like on TikTok too, though. It always kind of looks like half like frozen, half melted. Damn. Right? Uh, Honey, uh, come on, uh, just dig in. It's totally. Okay. Thanks. It's totally exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, these TikTokers are lying. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. It's just straight cheese and ham. It's like the creamiest, weirdest, warmest texture. <laughs> it's like eating glue, but it tastes like cheese. It's What's... so thick. I don't know what it's from. Maybe it's the mixture of the ham and okay, the cheeses. And it's so thick. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think of it? What's the vibe? <laughs> You know. <laughs> when you have to say you know after you take a bite of something. <laughs> you know. Flavor is not bad. It's the texture that's a little weird. It's very sticky, right? It's too much, you know? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't stack like 50 of them <laughs> together, no. Yeah, I don't it's think- It's better you... just like three slice, right? Yeah. <laughs> We've already made it down this long, scarier path. This is the journey. Is it opening? Yeah, it feels like a boob implant, if I'm going to be honest. I imagine the texture is the same, so... <laughs> <laughs> Not sure if I want to go balls deep on this one. Hmm. Oh, upset. That? that was a lot of good cheese I used. <laughs> I could have melted that on ramen. <laughs> so I'm taking out some slices, putting into my chalupa. Mm, now okay, we got fine. a cheesy ham chalupa. Oh, I'm fine. I will take out some slices mm. and put them into my chalupa as well. Doo -doo. Doo -doo. Yeah. I am currently 21 years old, working as a choreographer, but I grew up as a competitive dancer, training at a studio every week and competing at tons of competitions up until I graduated high school. I was probably 12 when I started competing at this one specific dance competition that 
I will not name. My dance studio attended this specific competition every single year until I graduated. And because we attended this competition so much, my fellow teammates and I started to recognize and become friendly with the competition staff. So the people organizing the dance competition. We would greet and talk with the backstage workers each year that we saw them. And when I was around 15 years old, I developed an innocent crush on one of the backstage guys named David. He was in his early 30s at, his, at this time, so I clearly knew that I didn't have a chance with him. But all of my teammates knew about this little crush that I had, so we would all giggle every time we saw him backstage at competition, and I couldn't help but get the butterflies every single time that I saw him. Once I graduated and could no longer compete as a dancer, I got really passionate about choreography and became a full-time teacher at my childhood dance studio. This meant that I would continue to attend the competitions every year to support my dancers now. So because of this, I continued to see David every time I checked my dancers in backstage. Man. He was always very friendly, and our interactions were always pretty quick and simple. But since I was no longer a minor, my crush for David only grew, and I felt like something could actually happen between us. Every time we spoke, where do you think this is leading? I always like to guess well, in my head. Come on, they're married. They're That's what you think. But I feel like you guys always have the most what the fork life happenings. Really? They yeah. always end up f***ing and... They're going to end up f***ing and mm -hmm. then something weird is going to happen. And then she's mm -hmm. going to be like, yeah, I think he was a serial killer. Anyway, love you. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's crazy. We actually don't get that many happy endings. What's going on, guys? Mm. What's going on? You know, happy ending is overrated. Yeah. It's a lie. It's a lie. That's why we're getting married. Do you know anybody with happy endings? No. No. Not a single person. Not me. Yeah. I'm not happy. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my crush for David only grew, and I felt like something could actually happen between us. Every time we spoke, I felt a little spark between us. Eventually, I became really close with a girl named Chrissy, who often judges this dance competition. We practically became best friends. He's gonna f Chrissy. I don't know. One weekend, Chrissy was judging in a city a few hours from where I live. So she texted me and asked if I wanted to come into town that night to hang out with her and the other competition judges and staff since I already knew most of them. I wasn't doing anything that night anyway. So I agreed and decided to drive a few hours to go hang out. Plus, I knew that David was gonna be there. I drove into town. I met with a group at a bar in the Wait, city. How old is she now? She's 18, I believe. Oh. She's not a minor. She graduated and started mm. teaching. And he's still 30 something. Yeah, he hasn't aged at all. He's still 30, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, he's inching close to like 35 yeah, so or even 40s. 30 yeah. Okay, I greeted everyone and took a seat next to David at the bar. He looked so good despite him being 16 years older than me. So if she's 18. <laughs> okay. Yes, 18 plus 16. 34. Right? Okay. 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 About an hour in, the night was going well. We were drinking, dancing, having a lot of fun. I was becoming a little tipsy, so I was pretty flirty with David, and he flirted right back. And as the night progressed, he starts buying me drink after drink after drink. And that was when we started to get touchy and exchanged a few kisses. Kisses. My 15 year old self was freaking out, but that was where things start to get a little blurry. My vision was going in and out because of how drunk I was. I blacked out for a minute to wake up still at the bar to Chrissy screaming in my face saying, you're going to be the reason that I lose my job. What the hell? I blacked out again. Eventually, I woke up to Chrissy and my other friends helping me walk out of the bar and I was sobbing because I have no idea what I did wrong to have Chrissy scream at me like that. I was also so shaken up because the night was so blurry. Chrissy explained to me that David and I were all over each other at the bar, which set off some of the other competition staff members. I guess David and I were creating a spectacle that made the competition staff look really unprofessional. Although, I should be able to do whatever I want considering I wasn't working for the competition. And it's not like there were any dancers attending the competition who were also at the bar. So, it made absolutely no sense for Chrissy to be that upset with me. Everyone was tired and sort of fed up, so we headed back to the hotel. And despite being upset with me, Chrissy was letting me stay in her hotel room. So her and David helped walk me to her room. 
And once we get to the room, David begins comforting me because I'm still shaken up about what just happened. Chrissy's still upset with me, so she ends up leaving the room and driving all the way home that night. That was when David oh, helped me get into bed ay, ay, and then ay, started ay. kissing me. And well, you can, you can predict what happened next, okay? I, a 20-year-old girl, so we were completely wrong. I did all that math for no reason. Oh, she's 20? I, I, a 20-year-old girl, slept with a 36-year-old backstage guy that I had a crush on for the past five years. I still can't even believe that it happened. Afterwards, he kept saying things like, I think we all saw this one coming. A ah, that's, a little, <laughs> Dude. that's a little call the cops. Part of me was like, my younger self would be flipping out right now. While another part of me, I was like, yeah, okay, th good, good, good. This man literally watched me grow up. The f <laughs> and honestly, Wait, so she's getting red, red flags? Getting the ick or no? Well, I had a little bit of hope. But you know how, you know how they be. She said, guys, come on. I'm like your mother now, okay? Come on. It honestly felt so wrong, but so right. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop it. I'm supposed to be a good influence. Hey, what happened? This is like our daughter's like journal. Yeah. Hey, what do you do? Well, I'm not telling her. That I saw it, because then she would stop writing in her journal, and I gotta find right. out her secret somehow. I'm just kidding. Technically, it's not illegal. Yeah, it's not. They're both adults, so. So what do you say? Like you'd be like, you go, girl. No, I don't think I'd be like that cool. Mm. I'd just be like, you You're know. You're not gonna be that cool. Maybe I'd tell her a little story about uh the guys that groomed me when I was 15. Albeit they never waited. And then until she's I was gonna 20. be like, shut up, mom. I gotta go to a party. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll shut up. You're wasting my, my time. Okay, sorry. You're so lame. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Your story is boring. Okay, sorry. You don't. Know, Are you in, done? <laughs> you know, back in my day, some people actually called me a really good storyteller. Yeah, that was your day, mom. Oh, okay, sorry. Are sorry. you just gonna be a pushover? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then I'm gonna be like, okay, you know what? You can go to the party. I'm gonna turn around and be like, babe, you better not. Let her go to that party, okay? There's gonna be drugs there. Drugs! <laughs> and then you're gonna be like, just tell her no then. No, I cannot tell her no. I'm the cool mom. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna be the you're gonna be the uncool dad. Are you ready to be the villain of the family? I don't think I'm the villain. You can be the villain. <laughs> you're gonna be the one that puts his foot down. Like, did you have a parent where um you ask them something and they say, ask mom or ask dad? Mm. Which one was yours? Like if you ask the mom, either she says yes or no, <clears throat> or does she say ask dad? Yeah, ask dad, yeah. What does dad say? Does he say yes or no, or does he also say ask mom? No, he's just... <laughs> he went to go get milk. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I'm gonna be the ask dad mom, for sure. I'm gonna be like, I don't know honey, ask dad. Meanwhile, mm. in my head, I'm like, don't go to the party. Are you crazy? Absolutely not. That was about six months ago. He now continues to snap me every single day. Snap at 36 years old Snapchat. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. But you know 36 is not that old, right? Like Andrew is what? 35. Yeah. You 36 is not that old, but get... to snap your love interest? Yeah, we know it's not even snap. older. Okay, guys. Snapchat is fine, mm -hmm. but to Snapchat your love interest? Yes. Is that weird? Little f boy. Mm. A little bit f boy. Like you can use Snapchat, but why don't you text? I can't help but be sort of disgusted with him. <laughs> okay, so I'm right. He seems to only see me in a sexual way and it grosses me out to think that he saw our hookup coming. I was literally underage for most of the time that I knew him and he knows that. Man's watched me grow up and now irks me to think that he watches underage girls dance for a living. Oh, mm. yes. But I can't say that I regret what we did, so. <laughs> What's going on Come here? On now. What's going on? Come on now. It's like anytime, anytime I'm like, yes! You're like, anyway, back to the dark side. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, that one's a little weird. That one's a little bit weird. And then, you know, I think there's gonna be another realization. You're gonna get massive icks when you turn 36. Cause that's what happened to me. I turned the age of the people that groomed me, and I went, oh, 
Oh, oh. Yeah, don't you think so? Why are you laughing like that? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? Huh? Nothing, nothing. Why? Why? Nothing. We're just talking about this last night, so. Oh yeah, yeah. Wait, why were we talking? Oh yeah, yeah. I know why we were talking about it.、Mm -hmm. So bad, so bad. They're getting married now. <laughs> you don't even want to know who they're getting married to. Oh, <laughs> I'm so annoyed right now. <laughs> I also drank my own pee. That's a confession, not from me. I also drink my own.、Pee. Yeah, I'm like, what else are you drinking? Hi, Steph. Before I start, I just want to say I love you and your family so much. Your videos got me through one of the toughest times in my life, and they still continue to help me heal. Me and my dad were super close, and unfortunately, he passed away in November of 2021. As a 15-year-old girl, my life fell apart within one sentence, and I didn't do anything that brought me joy because I felt selfish doing it without him in the world. To ground myself, I decided to watch your videos, and it made me feel like I can feel joy again. Thank you so much. I know I'm one of the thousands of people that you help, but I just want to say thank you. Plus, I obviously can't abandon watching your videos. That's what brings me to my story. I was watching your last confession video, and someone mentioned drinking their own pee without context or detail. Yeah, I remember that one. When I heard that, I had a flashback moment. So I'm here to bring the context and the detail. This happened in elementary school, and although I was young, I was old enough to not drink my own pee. Now I do want to mention there are some influences at play here. My stepmom at the time was watching a movie, and I saw a part at where. <laughs> What the f is going on? My stepmom at the time was watching a movie, and I saw a part where a guy was giving a girl a golden shower. What kind of movie is she、um... watching? Because that's not. <laughs> What movie? I didn't see that in the Avengers.、Mm. I didn't see that in the fucking Avengers. Did you? <laughs> what is that? Obviously, back then I didn't know what that was, but I found it interesting. I don't know why I was allowed to see the movie, but I do know it left me a bit curious. So I was in the bathroom and I started to think about how my pee smelled and how I liked the smell. To me, it smelled <sighs> like popcorn at the time. You know what? Just take one. Minuscule bite of asparagus <laughs> came <laughs> over. You will never like that smell ever again. <laughs> I love asparagus, so I know. Okay, which I don't know if that's even healthy, but it smelled like popcorn. But I took it a step further, and I was like, "What if it smells like popcorn? <laughs> it must taste like popcorn." <laughs> so, <laughs> what are something that smell and taste doesn't match? It smells like something, but tastes、mm -hmm. like something else. Candles. Oh my god! <laughs> like durian. Durian, stinky tofu. Stinky tofu. But what smells good but doesn't taste good?、Mm. That's a more a deadly、lot. combo. I feel like, like there's、what? a lot of things. Like you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I let my intrusive thoughts get to me, and I made a plan. So yes, I had a plan to do this, and I thought, well, the girl in the movie seemed to like it. What movie? The next time I went to the bathroom, I decided to taste my pee. I scooped my hand under myself and I、oh, I peed on my hand. I got a little sick, like a, a little sip of pee, and licked it off my hand. And I'm literally cringing as I'm writing this. Literally so embarrassing. Anywho, the show must go on. So I lap up my pee like a freaking dog, and I immediately rethought my whole existence. <laughs> Which, like, when people talk in great detail about stuff、oh, like this,、man. the thing is, I know it's not good, but because you're making me so curious, I'm like, <sighs> what does it taste like? What does pee taste like? What percentage of people you think have drank their own pee? <laughs> is this I... number greater than the statistic? <laughs> For sure, <laughs> because you well, better. What、well, were the statistics? <laughs> let me let me Google this. <laughs> because you better believe, if I'm walking into a local Kroger or a Ralphs, and some dude with a clipboard comes up to me and says, "Ma'am,、uh -huh. have you ever had your own pee?" If I had my own pee, I'm gonna be lying. What? What? <laughs> Wait, let me guess. Wait, let me guess. Wait, you guess. You guess. Wait,、let、I'm me... looking at oh, it. Oh, okay. Let me guess. Twenty percent have drinking their own pee. More. Because before I saw your face, I was thinking single digits.、More? I was thinking like one percent. Me too. I was thinking like three.、Yeah. More than twenty, thirty. One in four people. Twenty-five percent of people. Wait a minute. Right now in this house, there are four people. <laughs> <laughs> 
You, me, Tiffany, and my mom. Oh yeah, it's for sure Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> last one to drink her own pee <laughs> it's for sure one of us <laughs> it's gotta be <laughs> i know it is oh my god dude this is not shocking information that means like let's say a hundred thousand people watches this video that means twenty five thousand of you guys are drinking your own pee you nasty nasty little mother forkers you better let me know in the comments oh right god. now which one of you okay oh my god is this real wow holy cow one oh my god four. so the next time you kiss four people just know one of them has pee pee tongue i expected it to taste like the butter you put on popcorn in the movie theater in my mind it smelled like it and it was yellow so it must taste good because the girl in the movie liked it <laughs> I don't know what kind of math I was doing, but it was not butter popcorn at all. I can still think of the taste today. The best way that I could describe it is toxic waste. Which makes sense because pee is literally flushing out bad stuff in your body. Plus, I was a little kid that drank juice a lot, but elementary school me didn't know that. Now, what you're about to read is disappointing. Apparently, I didn't learn my lesson because I went for another lick this oh, time. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, another time? Like the same time, just another, another oh leg. God. I realized after that taste, it wasn't going to change. So I exited the stall and washed my hands and rinsed my mouth. And then I then proceeded with my day like I just didn't gulp down some of my own pee. I'm 16 now, and to this day it haunts me in the back of my mind. I've never told anyone this story until now. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> okay, yeah. Apparently you're not that special. <laughs> to me but your pee drinking habits are not that special for some reason oh, wow. wow how many of these golden shower videos do you think influence people to drink pee i haven't seen one yet so I don't you know. haven't seen a single golden shower video nope 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 what you you see those you watch those I am not the very best at storytelling, so please bear with me. To preface this, I want to say that all of my siblings are 30 years old and up, and I just turned 20. Okay, my 30-year-old brother has been living with my sister for a pretty long time now because he's been going through it, and he makes very, very questionable decisions. That being said, he does not know how to choose friends whatsoever. This man, my brother does not respect boundaries, so he had one of his friends living at my sister's house with him, just casually. I know, like this was last October, by the way, so I was freshly 19, and these dudes were at my sister's house, rent-free, lazy as f and being so disrespectful. How did she let that slide? I don't know, could never be me. So on this October, it was my niece's fifth birthday, and we were all at my sister's just eating and whatnot. Then there's my brother's friends at the house too, who is damn near 40 by the way, and had always made me pretty uncomfortable. He would always stare at me, but I would try to brush it off because my brothers and sisters would always joke that he was quote gay. I don't know, I guess I always knew that they were wrong, but I try to brush it off. Anyway, at the little get together for my niece, I was looking good as I should. But I also have a 14 year old niece. So she was 13 at the time. And she's a pretty developed teen. And this dude was staring at both of us so intensely and disturbingly. So we were just there super uncomfortable. Before the cutting of the cake, this dude was having trouble with the TV. So he asked me back into the house and called me to help. He wanted me to put something on the TV for the kids. So I did. And when he took the remote back, he grazed my hand. Oh. And it was the most disgusting feeling I've ever felt in my life. I then ate my cake and told my nieces to come with me to one of the rooms because this man was creeping me out. I only talked to my niece, her mom, and my mom about how uncomfy that dude made me. My niece agreed and told my other sister that he was kind of sus and he had no business being at her house. She ignored us, as she always does. But those are stories for another time. Okay, so a few days go by and I get a very weird text at 1.36 a.m. and it says, hey there, wiggy face. Obviously, it's 1 a.m., so I don't reply, but I get another one at 2.18 a.m. that says, hi. Okay, still not awake, but at 8 a.m., I wake up and reply with, who's this? You guessed it, it's my brother's friend, and he responds with his name. I pretend like I didn't know who it was, and I asked him how he got my number. He said, I think your brother used my phone, so I was wondering who this is, to be honest. 
you're sending a winky emoji to an unknown number. Plus he said your brother before I even said who I was. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, what an idiot. What a bro. bro. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but your brother you <laughs> Dude, he is so dumb. Dude, that was so good. It's actually That was like two brain cells. Just one. <laughs> Waking the overtime. Then he sent me a picture of his ugly face saying, <laughs> <laughs> saying, this me. <laughs> this me? <laughs> this me. I just said, okay. Okay, that's you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, what the f He then asked if I remembered him and I said, yeah, and I know, I know. I should have stopped replying and blocked him or whatever. But I really wanted him to show his true colors so I could get him the hell out of my sister's house. I needed the evidence because my siblings can be dumb as hell. So when I told him I remembered him, he said he had been trying to get a hold of me since the day at my sister's house. And he sent multiple winking emojis. I was so scared and didn't respond. Jeez. But he kept texting, so I responded with, what do you need? And this dude really said... You hella grew up. <laughs> oh my god, what a creep. You oh. hella grew up. You look different and grown up, winky face. Between you and me, you mind if I text you? The truth is, I think you're so pretty. Between you and me, lol. This dude has been friends with my brother for years, and I guess that's why they make these gay jokes. Yeah, don't get me started on the homophobia from my family members. Anyway, this dude has seen me as a little girl and will now as an adult too. So at this point, I'm so disgusted because he is staying at my sister's house with her kids and he claims to be my brother's friends, but he he's acting so disrespectfully to say the least. The funny thing is he kept saying between you and me and he really thought that I was going to keep my mouth shut or something. I immediately responded with, I do mind actually, this is very inappropriate. You are my brother's quote, friend. You should know better. I am 19 and what you're doing is really gross. You stay at my sister's house with children there. I hope you're smart enough to leave me alone. I was honestly so scared because he knows where I live and I don't know, he could have done something really bad. My mom was asleep so I didn't bother her with it at the moment and he quickly responded and apologized saying how it'll never happen again. He said, this will never happen, okay? I just wanted to know whose number this is. Sorry, take care, bye. <laughs> what the f What is this behavior? Does he do this with like the spam calls? He just texts them back like, this me. Like, what the f are you doing, sir? What That's not that? even a good... Yeah, I don't oh, even know what to say to that. Oh my god, dude. Hey, but, Is that it? No, 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 there's oh. more. Now, one thing, obviously, the age thing, disgusting, vile. We need to go punch him. We need to go find him and punch him, jump him. Ooh, that escalated. We probably shouldn't say that online. But second thing, is it breaking bro code? Like, how would you feel if your sister dated one of your friends, if you had friends? <laughs> I don't care. Right? Yeah. But is it weird? But I know some people care a lot. Oh, yeah, no, I don't care. Yeah, if my sister dated one of my friends, I think I'd be weirded out. Really? Yeah, I'd be like, wow, that's weird. Yeah. yeah, but then you'll get over it. I'll get over it very quick, but I'd be like, oh, that's weird. Hmm. But let me just tell you guys, we got some weird relations going on in these families right now. Oh, that makes it sound weird. <laughs> that makes it sound weird. Never mind. Another nope. day. This all ended by 10 a.m. And at 11, my mom woke up and I told her everything. She was furious and called the number from my phone immediately to cuss him out. He obviously didn't answer, so my mom got up to got up with super speed, still in her PJs, drove straight to my sister's house. He wasn't there, but my brother was, and she told him everything. I showed him the messages and immediately started sobbing because for some reason I felt so bad that my brother had to lose a friend. He was angry, but thankfully they were supportive, and I have not seen this dude since. Sorry there, are no, there was no crazy fight, haha. <laughs> Thank you so much if you're reading this. These have been the hardest two years of my life, to be honest. Not just because of that dumb man, lol. But you and your family kept me laughing and feeling like there's more to look forward to. So I want to thank you guys for that. I wish you all the abundant happiness and health. But I love you. And you set him up. That's some FBI sh and I'm proud of you, okay? <laughs> you didn't just say, don't text me. You said, oh yeah? Oh yeah? <laughs> okay. Don't go to sleep after having... After eating a heavy meal, I was gonna go to sleep after this. 
because it gives you nightmares, but of course me being a fat fool and wanting to take the fattest nap after devouring a large fry and Big Mac and an Oreo McFlurry, I didn't listen. I laid down, tried to go to sleep, but it wasn't just, it just wasn't coming to me. That's when I had the brightest idea to scarf down six melatonin gummies. What? Oh, bro, let me tell you something, okay? We have melatonin gummies. We don't take them on the regular, okay? Regular. We take them, maybe. Like, once every two months? Three months? Yeah, rarely. Very rarely. And we take one gummy, gummy split it into a third. We and bite it into a third, and it knocks us out. It's insane. Well, it knocks me out. He takes, like, a little bit more, but... Six melatonin gummies. I can't even. I would be knocked out for a week straight, seven but days. But also, like recently, we learned that melatonin gummies are so un unregulated. Yeah, like there's you never truly know how much milligram you're taking. Like there's no. It could literally be ten times of what's labeled on the yeah. container. So I'm just gonna tell you guys right now. According to Andrew Huberman, don't quote me. That's what he said. So I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, okay? The CVS brand melatonin, don't f with it, okay? Why? It's crazy. So strong. <laughs> but you know what's even stronger? What? Sugar Bear Hair Sleep Gummies on Amazon, okay? I know you haven't heard that brand in a while. I had them laying around. Yeah, the but serving they're... size is two gummies, okay? Two gummies. I can just rip the gummy bear's head off. Knocked out. You want me to take two? You want me to take two? But that's what they're saying. Like, there's so much variable. Like Between brands? No, between e each gummy. Like, one gummy oh, can have, like, yeah. fucking ten times of the melatonin than the next gummy. Yeah. So you never know what you're getting. <laughs> Bro. Big mistake! Everybody knows that the weirdest, most stupidest dreams happen when you take melatonin. So I have no idea what I was thinking. Now, I was listening to one of your podcasts when I fell asleep. Uh oh. Which is why I think I've had this terrifying dream. It started off normal. I had seen you and Dan Dan, don't tell me I'm gonna die, walking off a store and I ran over to say hi and you guys were so nice and gave me hugs and took pictures. But for some bizarre reason, you asked me if I wanted to film a video with you guys since you were going back to your house anyways and you would love a special guest. LOL. I mean, of course I said yes, like free, free delicious food. So we arrive at your house and for some reason it was a tiny broken down cabin in the woods and you sit me down and tell me why you oh set God. up the like camera. Our intro, your intro, <laughs> the cabin in the woods. It all makes sense. <laughs> it all makes sense. You set up the camera and set fiance is going to set the food on the table and I'm like, okay, cool. It was not cool. Okay, everything was not cool. I felt like something was horribly wrong and that I should get out as soon as I'm left alone, but I had no idea why I felt this way until I did. Stefiance comes out with huge trays of delicious smelling food, but he didn't have his panda mask on. And since we don't know what he looks like, his face was just all wrong. His eyes weren't even, and one eyeball seemed to be bulging out of the socket. <laughs> he had no nose, but his mouth was cracked and bloody and too wide for his face. <laughs> it's pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I think the worst part was he was wearing a bright neon green shirt that said, that read, I paused my game to be here. I paused my game to be here? It's like a video game shirt. Oh. That's weird. I don't ever think I screamed that loud in a dream. <laughs> it was the shirt that got her. Okay. I could feel myself slipping in and out of my dream, but I swear I could very clearly hear Stefiance ask, what's her problem? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's accurate too, huh? <laughs> Anyways, I managed to wake myself up and vowed to never take a melatonin induced nap after being fat ever again. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Oh man, honey, please apologize for what you've done. Yeah, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> honey, apologize. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. He said it's so cute. I don't even know what to say to that one. I swear these melatonin gummies are so insane. And you know what? This guy gaslights me. I've been meaning to talk about this. This mother forker has been gaslighting me. And I know he's been gaslighting me. We just learn a word and we throw it around. We run with it, okay? So this guy, he wakes up every day and he goes, oh, I saved you in my dream. I don't think you ever saved me in your dream. I do. I think you're just saying this shit to... Bro, what? So mm -hmm. exhausting. <laughs> 
All I do is saving you, <laughs> looking for you, hunting you down, like hunting comes... me down. Why would you be hunting? Yeah, because you're always off somewhere. <laughs> and I'm like, where's Stephanie? Where's Stephanie? Where's Stephanie? Guys, wow, so exhausted. If you ever, if you ever catch us in a busy place, okay? Tiffany had mentioned this. It kind of looks like we're in an abusive relationship, and she mentioned this because she was like, "Hey guys, like you guys look really weird in public together." It's because I love to wander and i get i wander and then i start getting panicked that i don't know where anybody is so now he has this habit of constantly grabbing my arm and pulling me back and pulling me back and tiffany was like you guys like i don't think it looks like you shouldn't do that in public people are gonna think things what do you mean what did i do it just constantly oh yeah am i yeah on the off chance that I do slip away, I just see him, honey, <laughs> to Target, honey, to the aisles. But then sometimes I'm like, man. <laughs> Some other girls will be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna be like, the f <laughs> Who's that, honey? Huh? Who's that? Do you care to explain yourself? It's not what it looks like. I don't even know her. I don't f***ing believe you. Last one. Pretty sure my sister friend and I ran into a scam of some sort or attempted kidnapping. We were out shopping. We live in an area that is close to a bunch of major highways and close to a border. We get a lot of people traveling and also coming into our city to shop, which makes our city an area that sex trafficking and drug trafficking happens a lot. So we're out shopping. We each have our own styles, so we spread out for a few rows and racks. And as soon as my friend looked alone for a few minutes, a woman approached her asking for help. My friend, let's call her Sam, told her, uh, I don't work here, lol. The woman then told her she's scared and her husband left her and that a strange man is following her. Sam brought this woman over to my sister and I rejoined the group. I've been approached by girls and women that were alone in public or separated from their group and felt unsafe. And every time they go along with the whole, oh, pretend you're a part of the group of my friend thing, you know, this woman refused. She couldn't keep her story straight on a bunch of things. I was trying to calm her down. She kept getting more and more anxious the more safe she was. For example, she got all worked up and started panicking and pointing to the man that she said was following her, which, you know, he was acting weird and watching her, so it was plausible and weird in the moment, but like wrong, right? And when I told her she's safe and we're gonna tell the manager or the store staff, she again got more worked up about my sister. And uh, when my sister approached a manager, feigning asking for a price check on a skirt, but really to clue them in on the man following her. A woman feels like she was being stalked or something. Yeah, and then the sister went to go ask the worker like the price of something or like, uh -huh. oh, I'm going to go ask the price for this. But she was going over there to be like, that woman is, you know, saying all these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then this woman starts getting more freaked out. I regularly have anxiety and or panic attacks, so when she started to hyperventilate, I stepped in front of her to get in her line of sight and try to instruct her to look at me and to breathe and follow along. She immediately looked annoyed and got her breathing back to normal and starts trying to see around me to see the man again. I broke her line of sight and she corrected it. Red flag. Trying to calm her down off and on, I tried to make conversation. I asked about her husband since she had mentioned he left. When she was frazzled and I asked, she started to point at the man who was the stranger and following her and then she got hysterical. I asked, what about you and your husband? Like, what were you guys in the area for? And she said date night, but that's all ruined. Okay, that's a weird response. I asked if they were there for shopping and she said no, even though she was literally in a store. I asked where they were gonna be having dinner and she didn't give an answer. Once the staff was told, she tried to ditch us. I'm dumb and since we told her we would stay with her, I followed her and told her, let's head to the changing room so I can try some of this on, still pretending that she's part of our group. The manager was near the changing room and was in view of Sam and my sister and she refused. She ignored me and kept walking. She set up shop in the furniture section of the store and the man following her set up shop across the store in a straight line from her with perfect line of sight. I stood in between breaking that line of sight and she asked me to move, saying that she wants to see him. I told her that I was purposely blocking his view of her and about a minute later, he walked away. He moved to following and creeping on a group of teenage girls also across the store from us, but with a direct line of sight to the woman again. So all throughout, there were several red flags and just an unsettling feeling. Afterwards, we were talking through some of the details and it just didn't add up. We we're pretty sure we ran into some sort of, um, someone who is addicted or dealing with addiction, some physical signs with teeth and was covering her arms with a jacket in the summer. And maybe 
she was approached to make a quick buck. She was supposed to get someone alone, get them to help her and stay with her until her husband gets back to pick her up. But she messed up when she approached Sam, who was not alone. She extra messed up because we alerted the store staff. So her date night plans were ruined because she didn't get Sam to go out and get jumped into the parking lot. Not sure if it would have been for money or theft or sex trafficking, but it's pretty scary to think about. Jeez. <sighs> Holy. Yeah. Brett's that crazy. That is terrifying. You can't open doors anymore when your doorbell rings. You can't fucking help people out when they're lost. It's kind of scary. Mm-hmm. Because these people are like so sick and they know exactly what a lot of women will want to do, which is help another woman mm-hmm. when they're in a scary position. And that's like dangerous on so many levels because especially if a woman is actually in danger, women are now more skeptical to help. <sighs> Wow. Yeah, why didn't she approach store staff? That would have been my first red flag. Because it's a stranger. Like, I maybe I would understand more if it was her partner that was the one that was abusive that she's trying to get away from. Maybe talking to store staff is a bit more, like, out there. Mm. Actually, well, talking to a stranger is pretty out there. Store yeah. staff, you could say, oh, I'm asking for something. Yeah. But if it's a complete stranger, why don't you just ask the store staff to call the police or something? Sketchy. Definitely sketchy. Hmm... <sighs> So many sketchy things. I don't even know what to believe anymore because there was a whole TikTok that was going around of how they put um, like a smear or something on your front license, like windshield. Uh-huh. And then when you start driving, it's like a piece of paper. It comes up and it covers. So they want you to stop and then take it off. But as you're getting out, they'll like snatch you. What the hell? I don't know if it's true. What the? But you know, you know what my solution is? I just never leave this house, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's like a running joke in my family. They're like, you need to get outside, okay? You need to. With your freaking face filter. Yeah, yeah. so I, 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 I go outside. I just like do walks. Once a month, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Leave it in the comments, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to check out SeatGeek, and let me know if you guys are gonna see, if you guys are gonna see Beyonce, or Twice, or Blackpink. In, in New York, let me know because maybe I'll be there. I don't know. I'm so excited. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.